Bobby Joe Long grew up in sun-drenched Miami, Florida, the only child of a single mom. He joined the army, married his high school sweetheart, and had two kids of his own. But none of them ever suspected the seemingly loving husband and father was a serial killer who terrorized the Tampa Bay area. He is a monster. There's no way to comprehend how anybody could do anything like this to another human being. And to think that, you know, I used to be so crazy in love with this man. The man that I knew, the dad that would come and pick me up and hang out on the weekend, there's no way that I would have ever made a connection between what he was doing and the person that I saw. We had been married for about three months and he had a motorcycle accident. Bob flew about 100 feet and landed on his head. It had put him completely unconscious in a coma for a few days. And that's when I noticed the real changes in him. And that's when the physical abuse from him to me started. Maybe three to four months after the accident was the first time that he had hit me. And, you know, I didn't tell anybody because I was so embarrassed. Their first child, Chris, is born that summer. After Sarah comes along a year later, in 1975, they settle down near Miami. My childhood, it was your typical family in a little black and white house, chain link fence around front, couple kids sitting out in the yard waiting on an ice cream truck, playing with the dogs. It did seem very normal. But behind closed doors, it's another story. At the time, Chris is barely five years old. I remember hearing screaming through the walls. Kind of a terrifying situation. I used to try to not make any noises so that you kids wouldn't be scared or be subjected to it. And there was times he just wouldn't quit. And for Cindy, there's another disturbing change in her husband. A nearly insatiable sexual appetite. He would just almost demand it. You know, if there was times where I was not in the mood or whatever, he would get really aggravated about it or I was forced to have sex with him on numerous occasions. I had to keep telling myself, you know, his behavior, his hitting you, his short temper and everything, it's gonna heal. He's going to get back to his old self. And he never did. Bobby Joe Long was arrested today on multiple charges of kidnapping, rape, and murder. Mr. Long, what can you say to us, please? Long's most recent victim was Kimberly Swan, a single mother whose body was found on November 11th. It's a horrible thing to go through. It's horrible. I guess you never really understand until you've experienced it. Kim's death shattered our lives, it did. We didn't know how to cope, we didn't know what to do. My sister Kim and I were very close. Kim was very energetic, very happy-go-lucky. She was a, the instigator. Even though I was the oldest, she was the instigator. If my mom wasn't home, we'd sneak off to Half Moon Lake, come home, put our bathing suits in the clothes dryer so she wouldn't know we'd been there. We were always close, but I think we got closer during our pregnancies, and we had our babies on the same day. She had a boy and I had a girl. I always felt very protective over Kim. The unidentified body of a young woman was discovered earlier today on Orient Road, just north of Highway It was all over the news. I ran in the house, and I called my mom. And I said, um, they found a body, Mom. Kim's not home. I called the police department, and I said, please, my sister's missing. You found a body. I have a feeling it's her. And she said, what is your sister's name? And I said, Kim Swan. And she said, hold on and let me get a detective. And then I fell apart because then I knew. I knew.
30 years after he brutally murdered 10 women, Bobby Joe Long sits on death row in a Florida state penitentiary. I don't really think he cares about what he did. I, I, I don't think he has an, a sense of accountability of any kind. Knowing how much I love my daughters, how could you take somebody's from them? I wish I could do something to make it not have happened. Now, Long's ex-wife, Cindy Brown, is about to sit down with Tammy Caspi, the sister of one of Long's victims. It's very courageous for both women to step out and to meet each other, not knowing how the other one's going to respond. First of all, I'd like to tell you that I'm very sorry for your loss, and I'm sorry that the person I was married to did that to your family. I can't imagine what it was like to lose your sister. It was horrible. It was really horrible. Um, I felt like I was constantly trying to run from it, you know? I didn't know anything about grief counseling. I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was in a whirlwind, but I just put my focus on my family. Tammy, you brought some photos of Kim. Can we look at them? Sure. This is Kim. Aww. The best way I could describe Kim was happy-go-lucky, mm -hmm. you know? Always on the go. She had a lot of goals. She was in school. She only had seven weeks to finish her course in medical assistance. And she had a beautiful little baby a year and a half before it happened that my parents adopted right away, mm -hmm. and they raised him. She would have been a good mom. No, she already was, mm -hmm. you know? For so many years, I would just feel like, how did I not pick up on some kind of sign or something? <laughs> but I don't know what sign was there, because I, I beat myself up constantly thinking back. I mean, you guys are the victims because you lost your, your sister. She's the victim because she lost her life. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it's a snowball effect of what it does it sure to everybody. Yeah. You know, I, I knew he was capable of beating the life out of me. Right. And I figured at some point in time, you know, if I didn't get away from it, he was gonna kill me. Yeah, and he probably would have. I was in a, in a relationship mm -hmm. where I was battered severely, and you don't think that they could be something else, you know? You don't think that that person might be committing these crimes. No, they learned to hide it. Tammy, Bobby Joe Long still sits in prison. How do you feel about that? Well, I never feel that taking a life is necessarily the right answer. I don't like to think about other people's destiny. If he's executed, It'll probably bother me quite a bit because that's my children's father regardless. And as ironic it is, as it is, he was always a, a firm believer in the death penalty too. Was he? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that today's meeting is bringing any sense of closure? There'll never be closure. You know, she's gone. You know, your life was disrupted. Mm -hmm. You can never get that back. No, you can't. Because many times, with talking with my mom, we actually worried about you guys. Oh, thank you we so wondered much. and we worried. Because I can remember her saying, I can't even imagine what they're going through. What a wonderful woman. I just lost her child and worried about this monster's children and, and ex-wife. Yeah, but it had nothing to do with you. You're lucky that you survived. Cindy, did this meeting happen as you thought it would? No, I was really nervous. <laughs> but it, it worked out really well. It's good to be able to meet Cindy. What's going on here where you're bringing the victims from both sides together? Why didn't somebody think about this a long time ago? I know. Oh, okay. I feel brokenhearted that her family worried about my family. It's just unreal that they lost a child, but they're gonna worry about somebody else. That has to say a lot for her family. It takes some of the burden off of you to know that that these people aren't blaming you for the things that your dad did. 
It's just nice to know that we're not viewed as, as monsters as well or less than human. I feel a big sense of relief. I feel at peace. It was nice to meet Cindy, and I think it would be good for us to put something together for other people for the future. Kim, she would be happy about it. She would like it.